When a small country like Northern Ireland gets through against the odds to the finals of football's international championships, there's always cause for celebration. That's what happened in our first reunion more than 30 years ago, when your man hit the ball and Northern Ireland had it all. España 82 and the first time Northern Ireland qualified for the World Cup finals since 1958. Not even the great George Best had taken part on football's greatest stage. But Billy Bingham's men would defy all expectations. Key to the success of the 82 campaign was the then 37-year-old goalkeeper, Pat Jennings. I've been coming to Windsor Park, I would say, for it, it must be 60 years, over 60 years. My father used to bring us down to the international matches here, my brother and I. I've been trying to qualify from joining the international team with George Best the way back in 1964. And I thought by that stage that it had passed his by, I was never going to make it. Oh, a great save by Jennings. Golden brown, texture like sun. Part of the squad playing alongside Jennings was 24-year-old right-back Jimmy Nicholl. Northern Ireland won games they should have lost and they lost games they should have won. It was that, they were just up and all over the place. And then Billy Bingham became the manager in 1980. And right away he, he, he put a discipline in the place. And he took it on the park and he took it into performances and that was the start of it. And so the qualifying campaign began for Espana 82. Grouped with Portugal, Sweden, Scotland and Israel, it wasn't an easy road. To secure a place in the World Cup finals, they needed at least a draw against Israel in their final match at home in Windsor Park. Playing that night, the 24-year-old Burnley forward, Billy Hamilton. It was the old Windsor Park, the old Span Cup, and there was, I'd say, 40 to 50,000. They were crammed in like sardines, and the atmosphere was fantastic. And the free kick to Northern Ireland. We got a free kick and Jimmy Nickel was supposed to put one hand up if he was uh, going to hit it near post, two hands up if he was going to hit it uh, far post. And it was a cold night and Jimmy started to rub his hands and me and Jerry Armstrong looked at each other. He eventually got his signals right and uh, I remember jumping up at the far post. Up goes Billy Hamilton, Armstrong, yes! That was a turning point in a big Jerry scored. What do you hear the most important whistle of the evening? I don't need to say anything. Windsor Park erupted. Israel were out and Nornarn were on their way to the World Cup finals in Spain. We looked around, the, the crowd was going berserk. We'd done a lap of honour around the pitch and you just didn't want that to end. It was fantastic thrill that we had actually qualified for our first World Cup. More than three decades later and some of the 82 team are returning to the hallowed ground where their World Cup dreams became reality, Windsor Park. In those days it was like a family, it's just that bond, you know, with, with players and with the team. And that's the sort of bond that gets you playing together. Joining goalkeeper Pat Jennings are teammates Billy Hamilton, Felix Healy, Jimmy Nicholl and Terry Cochran. <laughs> I haven't changed the winds, always just here, man. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. All right, not a hurry to play. Their reunion, a chance to recall just how big an impression their success made on people here at the time. I would never get into those shorts again. <laughs> Good one of you there, big Billy. Lee. Pick that one out, lad. That's the Austrian one. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's in full flow, the barn at Ireland. But didn't realise the impact, but you'd go into a restaurant and like, yeah. face, you'd get up and start clapping. Like, that was uh, you know? amazing. I didn't realise really until we came back. Yeah. And we had a reception in the City Hall and everybody's out in the street. That's whenever you realise what it meant to that the people back then, you know. I'm sure you, know you were getting older. You I'm were starting to turn brown. <laughs> Older maybe, but these World Cup heroes have still got it 34 years on.
The 82 team that, against the odds, proved their doubters wrong. Now you can get odds of 20 to 1 against England, 40 to 1 for Scotland, and Northern Ireland are 100 to 1 outsiders. The next one coming out here will either be Northern Ireland or France. Let's just see where Northern Ireland go. Being ranked outsiders was the least of Northern Ireland's worries. With seven months to go, there were more pressing matters for Bingham's men. So Northern Ireland will play Spain in the last game. And we had to beat the host nation on their own ground and not many people give us a chance. But with Bingham's discipline, the team knuckled down. With 10 days in Brighton, <laughs> how was our training camp Brighton? I think Scotland were in America, England were in America, climatization, and Northern Ireland were in Brighton. We trained half nine to half 12, had an hour for lunch, half one to half three, and that was in severe heat. You, you may as well have been in South America. Meanwhile, back home, World Cup fever was taking over. Someone suggested we'll go. Always at that time, most people thought it was a joke, but as you can see, it turned out to be some joke. Match fit and with the country behind them, next stop for the squad, Spain. Northern Ireland's World Cup players flew out from Heathrow this evening, the last of the three home countries' squads to arrive in Spain. Valencia, the Northern Ireland team's first base camp. Settled in, it was time to get down to work. First game up was Yugoslavia. Petrovic's corner. The good header well saved. We got a great draw against Yugoslavia in the first match, and Yugoslavia were a great team in those days. And then for the following game, Honduras, we thought we could get a win there, but they were a big, strong, physical team. We didn't expect that. And Jerry Armstrong at the near to score the goal. So now we've got two points, and you think, well, at least we're unbeaten. Drawing one all against Honduras and sitting second from the bottom of the group, the boys in green had to get a win against Spain. No, no commentator really gave us a chance. We walked out of the tunnel and just the atmosphere was so thick. I could hear the Northern Ireland supporters in the corner, it was brilliant. Once the game started, it was a full-blooded affair. The Spanish tried to kick lumps out of us. The referee was very sympathetic to their cause. It's going to be a goal kick. And uh, he was seen to be booking our players and not the Spanish players. Two men booked and Northern Ireland's chances of getting through to the next round seemed doomed. We were delighted to get in and a half time in the leads, but we sort of still knew that a draw wasn't enough to get us through, so we're still waiting on a sort of semi-miracle to, to happen. And then, two minutes into the second half, and Northern Ireland's prayers for a miracle were answered. What Big Billy Hamill's doing at outside right, I'll never understand. I just decided to put the ball in an area that's going to cause them problems. And Armstrong! Northern Ireland have scored through Jerry Armstrong! It's the 100th goal of this World Cup tournament and it could be a priceless one for Northern Ireland. We were all euphoric about scoring. As were the fans back home. With the ball in the Spanish net, hopes of qualifying through to the next stage were reignited. But the game wasn't over yet. Number 13, and number three rather, Donaghy. Oh, and a fight between Donaghy and the Spanish player. It's red, and Billy Bingham's team are down to ten... You know they're going to come at you, and that's exactly what happened. But the boys in green managed to hang on to their goal advantage... And, and keep their World Cup dreams alive. And that's why that feeling at the final whistle of achievement is, is one that will never leave you. Proudest moment in Irish football history, surely. They've won the group. Northern Ireland were through to the second round. But despite some flashes of brilliance, Hamilton. the Spanish game was to be the pinnacle of their Espana 82 campaign. A draw against Austria and a 4-1 defeat by France would mean the end of the line for this World Cup dream. Out of the finals, but still winners in the eyes of the fans, 
the memories of Hispania 82 live on. And coming up later in the programme, who could forget their other winning success that year? The team reunite for one last performance of Your Man. It's all in good voice. Up goes Billy Hamilton. On strong, yes! In 1982, Northern Ireland was gripped by World Cup fever when Billy Bingham's boys got to the finals in Spain. Today, we've reunited some of the heroes of that time to reminisce about glories on the field. Good one of you there, big Billy there. That's, that's yours, good one. But there's one more person they still have to be reunited with, someone whose dulcet tones helped provide the soundtrack to that Spanish summer. The song, Your Man, was the Northern Ireland team's official theme. And at front and centre of the single, Dairy Pop Princess, Dana. Everybody was so delighted that the Northern Ireland team had actually got through to go into Spain. Everybody was so proud. Everybody in Northern Ireland said, Your Man. And I think at the time it was kind of the, the mascot for Northern Ireland. And it just seemed to flow so well, you know, when your man gets the ball. Northern Ireland has it all. My brothers would have done the bulk of it, and I think myself and my husband chipped in as well. We wanted a real flavour of Northern Ireland, so it has the tin whistle and it has the drums, and um, it, it just kind of grew out of that. And, of course, I have two brothers that are football fanatics. We should record this. We should record this with the team. And we went to meet Billy Bingham, and he liked it. Billy may have liked it, but when it came to recording the song, members of his team, like Jimmy Nickel, weren't entirely in perfect harmony with the gaffer. I remember in the build-up to the World Cup, somebody decided that, well, the record will make us record. <laughs> so it was a Sunday morning in Kensington, at the studio. It's embarrassing, and Big Jerry says, this isn't happening, it's not working. <laughs> Everybody's flat. Everybody's a bit nervous. And there's a few good singers in our camp, but there's a few very bad ones. <laughs> Jimmy Nickel is probably the worst singer I've heard. Second day myself. I think maybe it might have taken a lag or two to get us singing, but or to get us make, making some sort of noise. I don't know how she put up with us. A few pints helped us uh, relax and uh, help loosen the vocal cords. So the lager came in, a few bottles of beer, and then on the way you went, then everybody thought they were Frank Sinatra, you know. So did Dana know about the lad's secret confidence booster? I know that they were definitely, some were very uncomfortable in the studio. Uh, there definitely was a rumour that there was some cans of medicinal, medicinal lager brought in, but I didn't see them, so I, I cannot say yes or no. We will leave that to the men themselves. So there was Pat, there was Jerry, and there was, uh, was Felix Healy, actually was a singer. You nearly sing in desperation because you think, I have to do this, could have to get out. <laughs> Today, for the first time in 35 years, Dana is meeting up with some members of the squad. It's a chance to relive some very special memories. When I look at the cover um, of the single, it's just a flood of very good memories and happy memories. Just that snap, that the picture in itself is surrounded by a lot of memories. Are you all right? Thank you. Welcome. Nice to see you again. Welcome back. Welcome back. Deja vu. See, see, we got the record back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I said, there, yeah. Probably that can't be yours. Hi. That cannot be you. He doesn't look like Norman Wisdom there. He <laughs> doesn't look any different. Yeah. Slightly maturing in the hair. Exactly. Head. That's all. Exactly. That's all. Who's that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who is that? Her hair's changed as well. Yeah. 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 How did you? Was that a tank top, Martin O'Neill? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of marks would you give the boys on the day? 
Oh, definitely a few black oh, guys. Lower than average. No, no. <laughs> ten out of ten. Wow. I'd have given oh, you when you started. Oh, no, you... Are you kind of ready for this now? Ready as well, everybody. Yeah. yeah, these are not as. We don't know. There's not as, there's not as many of us. I think that's what's. You can't hide in the choir. No. Is that what you're trying to that's say? That's it. Oh, yeah. That's it. Do you think we should have a wee, a wee, like, just see how the voice is? By what's your usual warm up? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, no, I'm not. <laughs> that's my usual warm up. <laughs> I. <laughs> usual warm up, a bit of um. eight pints. <laughs> <laughs> Like so he's got to like yeah. sing. He's got to go over to him. What, what notes are you going to be borrowed to? What do you expect? Described as a bass baritone. A bass baritone. What's a bass baritone? When your mom makes a bow, Northern Ireland has it. Oh, that's big fat. That's it. Yeah. Unlike Scotland and England, who were both invited onto Top of the Pops, the Northern Ireland songmakers were never actually filmed singing the song. Today, we're going to put that right. But first, the boys are going to need some help. Of course, there's fewer of us now this time. I thought you might like to have, you know, a few more voices coming in. So I've invited some special people to come and help us. <laughs> fans then and still fans now, and more than willing to swell their choir's ranks. <laughs> OK, so they're going to play the music to us. And just follow me and I'll be right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready, guys. <laughs> None of the players winning awards for their singing prowess. But without a doubt, the song captured the pride of that time when the boys in green made their name on the world stage. Well, before I came into the recording studio, you think, oh, geez, I don't fancy this at all. And then we enjoyed it. And the supporters come in to make it even more vociferous and enhancing. It was great. Well, we really enjoyed the crack today. Brilliant turnout, but uh, that's the great thing about this Irish team, the support they have. That's our 12th man. It's great to be able to give something back to the fans because they, they were brilliant. They supported us throughout that, that tournament. And Dana really kept us uh, going and kept us getting through it well. It was a pleasure. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. I thought they sang fantastically well. Brought back 1982 and the fantastic victory that they had and beating Spain. Nobody can ever take that away.
More Real Lives Reunited next Tuesday here on BBC One Northern Ireland at the earlier time of 10.40.